Today is Monday, February the 27th. You should be reading today in Acts chapter 25. I hope that your study through the book of Acts as you learned about the early church and God expanding his kingdom through the early church has been an awesome study for you as you've learned to apply next steps to your life. I hope you have taken great next steps in following Jesus. Something that stood out to me, um, if you're new to us, one of the things we do is we share kind of some insights, some things that stood out to us from the text. Um, We also will answer three questions. What do we learn about Jesus? What do we learn about people? And a next step we can take together, as well as reading the chapter together. And so I just want to talk about some of those things right now. Something that stood out to me, something I highlighted in here uh, for myself, is if you're reading, all of a sudden it talks about this guy named Festus. And maybe you weren't paying attention because it's been a few days, right, since you read chapter 24. In chapter 24, it talks about a guy named Felix. And now it talks about a guy named Festus. If you don't pay attention, you miss out that um, Felix was no longer the governor of this region. Festus was. Two years have passed by. It's the last verse of chapter 24. And we have a new governor, Festus. And he's shown up and he is learning to um, help the people like him a little bit better. And one of the things we learn about this, if you read about this time period, is that the Jewish people had a tendency to uprise, to rebel, and to not be very good to manage by the Romans. And so every governor that came in had problems, whether it was Pontius Pilate, who was the governor during Jesus' time, or uh, Felix had problems of his own, and now even Festus, they've learned if you don't have the religious leaders on your side, you have problems. So Festus shows up, and one of the first things he does is he goes up to Jerusalem because he wants to make friends with the religious leaders there in the hopes that peace can exist. So that's what's going on in this passage. Something stood out to me uh, is just the the political tensions and things that are there in this passage. Uh, So what are some questions we learned about this, right? Question number one, what do we learn about Jesus? One of the things I learned about Jesus through this, from chapter 24 to chapter 25, is the extreme patience of God. God has a mission. God has a desire for these people, these Jewish people in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth to know him. And he has extreme patience. Paul's in prison. God could have snapped his fingers and made him out of prison, but he left him there because God had a bigger plan. And we'll see over the next couple of days what that plan looks like as it unfolds. But his plan is ultimately, spoiler alert, to get Paul to go see Nero, to go talk to the emperor, to, to talk about Jesus in the heart of Rome. That's God's plan. And it takes time. So we learn about the extreme patience of God. That he has a plan. That he has put forward. And he is willing to take however long it takes to get his plan to work the way he wants it to. What have we learned about people? One of the things we learn about people is that they don't really change. People don't really change. If you remember last week, as we wrapped up chapter 23 and chapter 24, they were getting ready to transfer Paul to Caesarea. And as they were getting ready to transfer, all the Jewish people said, we're going, in, this, in Jerusalem, a lot of Jewish people said, hey, we're going to not eat, we're not going to do anything until we kill Paul. Well, I hope that they broke that promise because it's been two years. And they, they took Paul to Caesarea overnight, with uh, surrounded by guards. And so uh, one of the things that I think is really funny is it opens up this passage that they talk about getting Paul to come back from Caesarea so they can also kill him on the road. They haven't changed. They haven't changed their approach. They haven't changed their wanting to get rid of the message that Paul had. So what's the next step? One of the next steps I learned from this passage is just how do I use my time? I said that one of the things that we learned about God is that God has extreme patience. He is moving his thing, uh, he's moving his timeline forward in the way he wants to. One of the things I can do as a next step, and you can do as a next step, but for me that I've learned from this is from Paul. Paul knew that God wanted him to go speak his word. Paul knew that he was going to be sent to all over the place as an ambassador, as Paul calls it in his letters, for Jesus. And Paul could have complained. He could have been like so sad that he was in prison in Caesarea and given up hope. But Paul knew that no matter what, his job, whether in prison, whether shipwrecked, whether anywhere, was to preach Jesus. To have kingdom conversations with people so they can help find the creator of the universe. So one of the things I know about Paul from his letters and even from the stories, we know that Paul uses his time well. No matter where he's at, he uses it as a way to point people to Jesus. Do you think Paul wanted to be in prison? No. 
Paul would have looked forward to the mission that he was getting ready to be sent on, right? God told him that he's going to go to Rome. He's going to do these things. So he had a hope of the future, but he didn't know the timeline of that. So while he was there, while he was waiting for Felix to Festus, while he was waiting for trial, we know because of who Paul is that he didn't stop talking about Jesus, even in prison. He used his time of Caesarea to encourage the believers there to help them take next steps of following Jesus and to continue to preach Jesus. My next step is the same as yours, is despite your circumstances, whether God is sending you or God has left you in a position in a place, use those moments of going and pausing and going and pausing to help people find Jesus. I'm going to read, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to read out of chapter 25 for us today. I hope this is a blessing to your heart. Three days after arriving in the province, Festus went up to Caesarea, uh, from Caesarea to Jerusalem, where the chief priests and the Jewish leaders appeared before him and presented the charges against Paul. They requested Festus, as a favor to them, to have Paul transferred to Jerusalem, for they were preparing to ambush to kill him along the way. Festus answered, Paul is going to be held at Caesarea, and I myself am going there soon. Let some of your leaders come with me, and if the man has done anything wrong, they can press charges against him there. After spending eight or ten days with them, Festus went down to Caesarea. The next day he uh, convened the court and ordered that Paul be brought before him. When Paul came in, the Jews who had come down from Jerusalem stood around him. They brought many serious charges against him, but they could not prove them. Then Paul made his defense. I have, nothing, I have done nothing wrong against the Jewish law or against the temple or against Caesar. Festus, wishing to do the Jews a favor, said to Paul, Are you willing to go up to Jerusalem and stand trial before me on these charges? Paul answered, I am now standing before Caesar's court, where I ought to be tried. I have, done nothing, I have, done, I have not done any wrong to the Jews, as you yourselves know very well. If, any, if, however, I am guilty of doing anything deserving death, I do not refuse to die. But if the charges brought against me by these Jews are not true, no one has the right to hand me over to them. I appeal to Caesar. After Vestus had conferred with his counsel, he declared, You've appealed to Caesar? To Caesar you will go. A few days later, King Agrippa and Bernice, uh, Bernice arrived at Caesarea to pay their respects to Festus. Since they were spending many days there, Festus discussed Paul's case with the king. He said, There is a man here whom Felix left as a prisoner. When I went to Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and asked that he be condemned. I told them that it is not the Roman custom to hand over anyone before they have faced their accusers and have had an opportunity to defend themselves against the charges. When they came here with me, I did not delay the case, but convened the court the next day and ordered the man to be brought in. When his accusers got up to speak, they did not charge him with any of the crimes I had expected. Instead, they had some points of dispute with him about their own religion and about a dead man named Jesus who Paul claimed was alive. I was at a loss how to investigate such matters, so I asked if he would be willing to go to Jerusalem and stand trial there on these charges. But when Paul made his appeal to be held over to the emperor's decision, I ordered him held against held until I could send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa said to Festus, I would like to hear this man myself. He replied, Tomorrow you will hear him. The next day Agrippa and Bernice uh, came with great pomp and entered the audience room with the high-ranking military officials or officers and the prominent men of the city. At the command of Festus, Paul was brought in. Festus said, King Agrippa, and all who are present with us, you see this man. The whole Jewish community has petitioned me about him in Jerusalem and here in Caesarea, shouting that he ought to not live any longer. I have found he has done nothing deserving death, but because he made his appeal to the emperor, I've decided to send him to Rome. But I have nothing definite to write to his majesty about him. Therefore, I have brought him before all of you and especially before you, King Agrippa, so that as a result of this investigation, I may have something to write, for I think it is unreasonable to send a prisoner to, on to Rome without specifying the charges against him. Let's pray. Father in heaven, may we be patient like you are patient. 
learning to completely trust you in your mission no matter what, and using our time to pause and our time to going wherever you send us to help people join your kingdom, to have kingdom conversations with people that point people to your heart and to your mission. Thank you for today and the chance to study your word. May we apply it well. Amen. Church, until we see each other again, you are sent. Have a great day.